is Sean Dillard, and I will be uh, talking about agriculture, particularly between the 6th century and uh, the 19th century, and even into the 20th century. Um, so through this presentation, we'll look at some differences and similarities in agriculture um, that is that is presented in the, in our novel that we read, Connecticut Yankee of King Arthur's Court. So first, what is agriculture? We'll look into uh, just a basic introduction of agriculture. <coughs> So agriculture is just another branch of natural science, um, very important branch that humans could not live or thrive without on this planet. Um, just as we've got chemistry and biology, uh, agriculture is just another branch uh, of those natural sciences. And so agriculture is the science that deals with the cultivation of the land and uh, management of the livestock animals and domestic animals. Um, but agriculture is, is far greater than just our, our food production. Um, and I'll give some examples right here um, of some different commodities that we're accustomed to um, and, and even commodities that, you know, people in the 6th century and even people in Hank's time were accustomed to. So the first, we'll, first off, we'll look at biofuels, something that come around later in the uh, 20th century. And so primarily we're going to look at ethanol. Um, <coughs> ethanol is... Uh, it's a fuel that can be produced from several different feedstock grains such as corn, wheat, oats, and sunflowers. Any, any of these that can be compressed into um, ethanol. So next we'll look at uh, different medicines, medications that are derived from animal tissue and plant tissue. And so drugs that, of the biological origin can be produced within these cells of plants and animals. Um, some examples right here, we got caffeine, penicillin, and aspirin. So clothing, uh, this is something been around thousands of years, so uh, something we'll see today um, in Hank's time period and as well as the 6th century. Um, and clothing is made from a lot of different material and even synthetic materials today. Um, but stuff, uh, you know, cotton and linen, which is derived from plants, and then animal hides such as leather and wool, um, that's uh, our clothing part that we get from agriculture. And so... First, before we get into the time periods, we'll just look at the two different continents, um, pretty much pre, uh, before the age of exploration, before the influences between these two uh, between these two continents. So first, we'll look at the different uh, livestock, animals, and crops that were raised between these two continents. So we'll view animal production within the two, and uh, also crop production. And so livestock. And so uh, the influence of livestock is going to be very one-sided, um, with Europe being a huge influence on North America. And so uh, before the age of exploration, people of, the, of North America, primarily nomadic people, and their main diet is going to consist of wild, wild game and wild plants. Um, they are later on going to grow some different, wild, some different grains, such as corn and wild rices. Um, clothing and texture is going to primarily be made of these uh, hides of wild animals. So these people are primarily hunters and gatherers. Whereas, you know, go to, you, you flip over to Europe, um, really only the nobility could hunt, um, and hunt and fish. So mainly their diet is going to consist of dairy products, some different greens and herbs, um, pork, lamb, and even beef. Um, but during the Middle Ages, we know, you know, the meat is going to be something of the higher classes, of the nobility. Peasants are gonna basically live off of uh, greens and herbs that, they, that they've raised. And so uh, settlers are gonna bring over horses, pigs, uh, cattle, and even goat, uh, sheep, chickens, to the North American continent. So um, really, uh, that's where we get all our domestic, domesticated animals. And so now we'll look at uh, influences of different crops, cash crops in particular, between the two. Uh, this will be a, a better exchange between the two. Um, so people are going to domesticate and farm any grains, such as corn and rice, like I said, in, the, in North America. Some important cash crops uh, native to America that's going to influence the rest of the world, such as tobacco and sugar cane. Uh, two species you'll see of Caminella right here, uh, which is... Uh, a, uh, the, the leaves of this plant is what is actually made, uh, what is used to make tea. Um, so we see, you know, in the novel where Hank says there's no tobacco to smoke, no tea to drink, no sugar. Uh, it's because these products were not introduced until centuries later to Europe. 
And so I put in there some misconceptions, wheat, oats, and barley, um, primarily because these, have, these were thought to be native to North America, whereas they were actually brought in, the seeds were actually brought in from Europe. And so we'll go over, we look at Europe people in the 6th century, like I said, raised different, a lot of different cereal grains such as rye, barley, and wheat. Um, I put down some misconceptions. Tomatoes, squash, and potatoes, as these were all important uh, food crops that were later introduced to Europe from North America. So then we'll look at the differences between these two time periods. <coughs> and so primarily we're going to be looking at technology and genetics, um, some more influences on agriculture, the people involved, um, and some different management practices. And so differences within technology. During Hank's time period, he is born uh, during the Industrial Revolution and, uh, and Agricultural Revolution that's going on in, in England. So many new cre uh, inventions were created to make work easier, <coughs> so, such as bob wire, uh, corn picker, cotton gin, milking machine, to name a few. During the 6th century, um, a lot of, you know, and it's stated in the uh, novel that Hank sees a lot of animals roam in rural areas freely, um, and so the harvest of these crops and animals is going to be major by, by hand, making uh, work a lot harder. And so differences in genetics, we're going to see, um, you know, during Hank's time period, especially engineering of different pl uh, plants are going to lead to an improvement of crops, artificial insemination, embryo transfers. Um, that that's something else that's going to allow human humans to uh, improve genetics within livestock and crops, uh, starting really in the 20th century. So right at the uh, in right in the the uh, later days of Mark Twain. So here's some images and some pictures. Uh, over here you've got the cotton gin, one of the first milking machines that's going to be used in the dairy industry. Um, and then I've put in new, uh, new ideas, first uh, corn picker actually of, of, the, uh, of 1926. And so now we'll look at the different attitudes within agriculture. And so we said, you know, 6th century, majority of the citizens are going to live um, in these rural areas on a farm and their diet and everything that they make is going to be um, essentially off of that, off of their own personal farm. Um, whereas you fast forward, we go to the 19th century, um, like I said, industrial revolution is going on. During this time period, many people are going to leave these rural areas and settlements to pursue manufacturing jobs. Um, during this time period, we're going to see the introduction into large plantations and commercial farms, um, so a lot less people involved directly in agriculture, whereas the 6th century, just about everybody was directly involved in agriculture. And so different management practices. Um, we'll just look at a few right here, modern agriculture techniques during Hank's time period and even stuff that's used today. Um, the use of extensive use of irrigation systems, synthetic fertilizers and soil conditioners going to come around this time period, and the use of cover crops to prevent soil erosion. Um, whereas 6th century agricultural practices is going to be very primitive, primitive uh, to this century. And so lastly, we will look at the similarities between uh, the two, these two time periods. Um, and so some two very important uh, similarities here. One is food preparation and food storage, and the other is how important uh, horses were up in this, to this time period. We've not really talked much about horses but that's going to, they're going to play a very important role in both centuries. Um, but food preparation and storage for personal use is not going to come around until a couple of centuries, uh, well, until the 1930s, really, for home use. Commercial use is going to come right at this turn of the century, but for home use is not going to be marketed until the 30s. Um, due to this, most foods are going to be salt cured, dried, smoked, and even pickled. Um, food safety is not going to be a concern until after um, really this time period and so FDA and USDA is not going to be established until the late 30s. And so lastly we'll look at how important horses were to both time periods. Um, primarily for transportation, work, and, and even show. Um, and so we see that horses have been used for transportation starting all the way back to 2000 BC um, and they would be the Major, the, more, the majority of people would use them as transportation until about the late 1930s or the 19th century. Um, horses are also going to be used to work and cultivate the land, plow up, to plow and till the land. Um, and horses are also going to be used um, 
for show. And so we see in the in the novel, jou and horses are going to be used in jousting tournaments in the sixth century and equestrian sports and different horse shows in the 19th century and even in today's time period. And that is my presentation on agriculture.